So just to review, validity is due to the form of an argument, so it's due to the structure of the argument. Um, truth value has little to do with it, except for that one case where you cannot have a, a valid argument with true premises and a false conclusion. The middle term is the term that shows up only in the premises. There's a minor term in the premises, a major term in the premises, and then the middle term, as you will see, ideally shows up twice, and it shows up only in the premises. Um, you may want to refresh yourself on major, minor, and middle terms and look at the test if you got one of these um, questions wrong on that section and see why exactly you got that wrong. There are seven rules of validity. We will look at two of them here in these slides. All seven rules are on page 177. The first four are terminological rules because they have to do with the terms of the premises and conclusion. The last three rules are qualitative rules. We won't look at them in these slides, but we will look at them in the future. They have to do with the quality of the proposition. Remember, quality is whether the proposition is um, a, a, an affirmative or a negative proposition. That is, whether or not it affirms or denies a relationship between the subject and the predicate. So, um, E and O are the nego, the negative propositions, and A and I are the affirmative propositions. So rule one is there are only three terms in a syllogism, the major term, the minor term, and the middle term. Now this should make sense to you because in the syllogisms we've looked at, we've only had three terms the major, minor, and middle term. When you introduce a term that is a fourth term, you interrupt the flow of deduction. Remember when you deduce a conclusion from premises, you see that the conclusion follows from the premises. So here's an example of a syllogism with four terms. All dogs are canines, all golden retrievers are good pets, and therefore all good pets are canines. Hopefully, you can see that the conclusion does not follow from the premises. In this case, the argument is invalid because it has four terms rather than three. There are um, two middle terms that are in the premises rather than one. The two middle terms are dogs and golden retrievers. There should be only one term shared, meaning there should only be one term that shows up in each of the premises that is shared between them. That is the middle term. Both the major and the minor term only show up once in each of their respective premises. The middle term should show up in both. Every syllogism with four terms is invalid. This is the most common violation of the rules of validity. So uh, you might just want to pause this and go over, make sure you understand which are the major and which are the minor terms in this syllogism and then see that there are actually two middle terms or two terms that are neither major nor minor in the premises. So sometimes there appears to be three terms, but there are actually four. So it looks like three terms if you count the words, but in reality there's four. And this is when one of the terms is used twice, but each time it has a different meaning. So you remember possibly um, equivocation from last year's logic class. You equivocate terms when you have two terms but use them in different ways. So even if it looks like there are three terms being used in a syllogism, be sure that all three terms are being used in the same way. So. Um, this is not a uh, categorical syllogism I have here, but you can see how headache is being equivocated so that you have a fallacy of four terms. And just look at this, you'll see, um, looks like three terms, but it's actually four terms because of the, the uh, use of headache in two different senses. So um, we've, looked at this first term of rule of validity, and here's the second rule of validity. 
The middle term cannot be in the conclusion. So if you look at a syllogism and the middle term is in the conclusion, you know immediately that the syllogism is invalid. You've been prepared for this because we've seen many syllogisms that have two terms in the conclusion. The minor term is the subject of the conclusion and the major term is the predicate of the conclusion. This rule tells us that the middle term can never be in the conclusion. The only job of the middle term is to connect the major and minor terms. It is a link between these two terms. And then the link is established in the conclusion where both the minor and major term are connected by the copula. So the middle term is the connection between the minor and major terms. And if it shows up in the conclusion, all you have shown is a connection between the middle term and either the minor or major term. That is not what you want. So here's a syllogism. You can see how the middle term connects the major and minor. You have all logic students or studious persons. Ned is a logic student, and then you have that minor and major, major term connected. Ned is a studious person, and what connected them was that middle term, logic students. So here's the homework for this week. Um, it's a review of what we just went over. If you want to um, review the information beyond what's in the PowerPoints, you can read 8.2, and uh, they have a lot of examples there, some of the examples I've used here. Um, again, these are just these two kind of basic rules. One, that you can only have three terms. Two, that you cannot have the middle term in the conclusion. Um, if you can just remember those, you don't need a lot of the explanation here, but I just want to explain why these rules actually work the way they do. Um, try out these exercises, see how you do, email me if you have problems, and I'm happy to meet with you in a Zoom class. I've done that with a student um, who just had a few questions. We can meet very quickly. Um, I am available, and I will have another PowerPoint for you this coming week.